Thank you all for coming here today, the Dharma House. So I was talking with Sopa. We're talking about what would be best. And according to the Dharma, we thought this might be best or that might be best. But the most important thing is to gain some understanding. So we decided that we'll be teaching the fourth chapter of the Wish Fulfilling Essence of Manual Instructions, <clears throat> Wisdom Openness. Now, Rinpoche is speaking in uh, Nepali. Ani <laughs> Dharma-gari-manche-ne-na-bhoji-bhani-ne-phaida-bhaya-na-yo-bhaya-na-ne-ko-bizar-gari-na-ne-lame-thun-ru-bharji-kun-sir-bhani-ko-mahang-goro-
내가 시술을 하고 다 어떻게 되어있어도 그런 것이에게 독립념시에다 보다 남산에 로직동 이자 손자 등에라 그렇게 제가 보이시작했는데 얘기해주세요. 대표원들 다 대가들 앞에 다 동학기기 저 담지대 때마다 소용하네. So the first thing I'd like to share is um, about the uh, history of um, the Buddha, uh, the Blessed Buddha, um, our teacher, who appeared in this world some 2,500 years ago. And it was around within a period of two, uh, excuse me, 20 years. Um, of the Buddha's um, Parinirvana that uh, our great guru, Mahaguru Padmasambhava, um, appeared. <clears throat> And I think many of you are already familiar with this because last time I was here, I shared one of uh, Guru, Rim guru Rimche's life stories with you all. But it was around 1,000 years ago that uh, Guru Mache made his way to the snowy land of Tibet via Nepal, bringing with him both Sutra and Tantra. So that's the first thing I want to share. ね、ロカズジュワレ、セナロカツ。ね、ドムナロカズタワシュワレ。あて、ヨンダマで。ハイエセナ、ゴルンボチ、クリ、アボクダンデレラ、コンサンピオ、カシエラ、ネマンピオ
ตาลอดจ่าตังลอดจูเสียงเงี้ยล่ะอันนี้เตลชินชูจูเตชินลิงบาสมิเตลเตลชิงจูล่ะอะนั่นก็ซอเอ่อลามิทุกข์ปาร
along with uh, Kandro Yeshitsorja. And so the three of them made prostrations, they made nine prostrations, offered a mandala of pure gold, and they requested Gurumbache, saying, it is said that the best way to remove obstacles is to supplicate the Guru. And since you are our Guru, please teach us a supplication that we can practice. Uh, and Guru Rinpoche accepted the request, placed his right hand on the head of the king, his left hand on the head of Yeshi Tsorja, and placed his head on uh, the middle son, Murup Temple. And then what he taught is this. And he taught the Parche Lamsa cycle. <coughs> so, after Gurumbache taught that, taught the Tuchun Parche Kunsa, um, he talked about the different types of practice, whether it be Maha Yoga, Ana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. And among those three, three inner tantras, what we're going to be focusing on here today is primarily Maha Yoga. Um, specifically, what's described here is the form of Guru Mbache known as Nansi Zilnu. Um, it's the form of Guru Mbache with his right hand holding the Bajra raised. Um, that's taught in the Tutu Parche Gunsa. And here in this text, the uh, wisdom uh, openness or Yeshi Zanta, uh, Guru Mbache teaches this particular form of Guru Mbache very directly, very clearly. So it starts from lojom or mind training and moves through the uh, mundra or preliminary practices with the 500,000 accumulations. And then it arrives at the main topic of generation stage with the accomplishment, great accomplishment, and so on and so forth. And there's also one moment in the text, a small part where it touches on uh, Dzokshin Semde, the great perfection. Um, the mind section from the Great Perfection. Mm -hmm. 
Sí, 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 You all are uh, familiar with this, the generation stage practice, because uh, all of you here at the Dharma house uh, often perform pujas and do different uh, practices like on the 10th and 25th that all involve um, a generation stage. However, most of us, you know, when things are going well and you don't have any problems, it's, um, uh, you know, we forget about the Dharma. But it's then when you have some challenges or problems, only then you remember the Dharma. Say, you know, I need to uh, do this or that to uh, uh, solve my problems. But I think it's best if we first kind of understand how Dharma works and how to practice the Dharma. So later, if we do encounter obstacles and uh, challenges, we'll know, you know, what exactly to do instead of running around here and there. Shungitongama, <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so there's so uh, there's no point in me uh, talking uh, a bunch going on blah 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 so let's now instead turn to the text uh, you can see here on page nine it begins with the title, The Quintessence of Wisdom Openness. Right? Uh, and it says, uh, once again, emerging from samadhi, right? and the lotus-born master taught this root yoga, the source of all mandalas. So what we should understand here is that every time Guru Mache gives one of these teachings, he actually completely transforms. Right? So in this cycle, we have you know, uh, Amitayas as the Dharmakaya, uh, Avalokiteshvara as the Sambhogakaya, and Guru Mache himself as the uh, Nirmanakaya, uh, surrounded by the 12 manifestations. And so when he teaches, uh, gives one of these teachings on one of the 12 manifestations or what have you, he actually emanates the entire mandala. He becomes the entire mandala and gives the teaching. So. Before this, it was the teaching on Chenrezig or Avalokiteshvara. 
um, with the full, you know, the full mandala with the uh, incomplete retinue and so forth. So that's why it says here, once again, emerging from samadhi. So he, he emerged from the previous samadhi, from the previous chapter. And now he's uh, uh, teaching this, uh, this, this fourth chapter. So, for a lot of people who are studying texts like this for the first time, it can be uh, quite difficult. Right? Um, often, most of us will just kind of sit there without the text, and you know, the Lama will go through it, bam, 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 one after it one thing after the next, and you're just going to sit there and say, oh, and, you know, be full of faith, you know, and say, okay, you know, whatever the Lama said. Um, and, you know, the good side to that is that you guys have, you know, complete trust and faith in the guru and the teacher. But the bad side of that uh, approach is that you don't actually understand what is being taught. Um, so um, let's try to work towards uh, gaining understanding because there's lots of benefit to be had there. One <laughs> So the text begins by saying, one who has obtained supreme freedom and riches. So Guru Muche begins the teaching here by talking about the four mind trainings. Uh, uh, and here, the first is the precious human body, which is comprised of the supreme freedoms and riches. As in the text. And, you know, if you really think about it, it's actually quite easy to practice the Dharma. Dharma practice is an easy thing. And I'm not talking about kind of a superficial or kind of a superficial Dharma practice where you only say you're a Dharma practice, practitioner verbally. But I'm talking about Dharma practice from the depths of your heart. Real Dharma practice is actually quite easy because we just have to change our minds. Right? And the mind is actually something that's easily changed. Take, for example, a moment where you say, ah, you know, wow, pity be on that person. You know, when you see someone suffering in that moment, 
your minds change, your hearts change. Um, just like that. So it's not actually something so hard. Like we, we tend to think of Dharma practice as being really challenging and demanding. But that type of thinking really only shows that there's you know, heavy you know, obscurations on our part, not that there's actually any great difficulty on the, the Dharma side. So that's why it's so precious to have these uh, supreme freedoms and riches, the precious human body, because it allows us to uh, practice the Dharma, which is not uh, as, as difficult as we think. And in doing so, you know, there's so, so much benefit to be had for our oneself and for others. Ni file nama tu sebut meta kuasa jen deh meta bukan itu aneh dia. So, it next reads that uh, and has grown wary of impermanence. So, um, <clears throat> that's the second thing, the second of the four mind trainings. We need to have a sense of impermanence and grow wary. Not wary in the sense of um, kind of laziness, like, oh, we know that the Dharma is so difficult to practice, and kind of, I feel tired, and not that tired sense of laziness, but a uh, sense of, uh, of wariness, as it describes here in the text, wary of impermanence.
So the text uh, then continues to say, should with intense renunciation endeavor in accepting and rejecting in accord with the law of cause and effect. So here it describes intense renunciation, right? So it's basically this uh, strong desire to practice, to practice the Dharma. And all of us, you know, most of us are worldly people and we have to deal with worldly realities such as family and work. And you might ask, you know, so when can I practice, you know, something like intense renunciation? You know, well, let's say you, uh, you know, have 30 minutes to practice a day. You should really focus on doing a real clean practice, you know, nothing but Dharma uh, during that time. That's really important. So whether you have uh, a spouse, children, uh, relatives living with you, or work, <clears throat> all of those things you can just put aside. Let go of all attachments for that short time, that session, and focus your body, speech, and mind completely, <clears throat> completely on that session, that uh, period of time. And in doing that way, you have a really clean, uh, really clean session. Um, so if you do that for that amount of time or an hour, um, or excuse me, if you don't do that for, you know, an hour a day or however, however much, and you just go around 24-7 every day, you know, grasping to family and work and everything you're focused on, then at the moment of death, there's no way you'll be able to let that all go. So instead, it's better to slowly start habituating yourself to just letting everything go for the period of your session. I think that's a very important way uh, how to practice. Lamma in a chapa in a clock pine, which a pummel, 
<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
So in the morning or any time, you can check with yourself, you know, what are the 10 non-virtues, go through them. And then what I also like to do is check with the uh, bodhicitta precepts, right? How well have I uh, up, uphold those today? Check with my tantric samaya. You know, did I have any wrong views to my guru? Did I uh, make sure to practice the recitation of my yidam day? Right? Kind of check in with those things. So that's what Guru Mache is at, advising us to do. He's saying, please, you know, uh, with intense renunciation, endeavor in accepting and rejecting, accepting the ten virtues, rejecting the non ten virtues, in accordance with the law of karma, the law of uh, cause and effect. so <laughs> मेरो के गरे बन अली सफल मान मा अली के किचा अच्छा बने एक महीने से इंसा बने पुरना होने से इंसा बने एक हफ्ता में पाऊंगे वो इस तो उनसा लामा नौलो पुरा करने का क्योंकि सही ना लामा नौलो पुरा ना काम का इंगा दिन गरे बने फल से अली थोड़े थोड़े पाऊंगे ओ ये तो महान गुरु ले के बानो बाये बन मेरो ยังเจอกับมาปัจจุบันสมัยนี้พอดีมาตาเดเลสอนเอเนตาอืมตาลาตุเทริงลามันโนลาเดนโกเรซอนซอนตาลามันโนลาเดนสิตาเลเปชาม
Jarbo Gunane, Jarbo Vijapo, Raza, Maharaja, a drink of Toma Toshavan. Mahato Page, Dambalachi in Dabo, Laman Nurjiman Dabo, Gana Pati Dabo, the Dirigent of Sotan, in Ragama, yes. Today we will be practicing the Lama Norha Puja. And, you know, basically what you think when we talk about Norha Lorha is just uh, accumulating a lot of money, accomplishing wealth, right? And it's true. It is uh, kind of focused on financial type things. But we have a word in Tibetan called Yang, which we can translate as prosperity. And this puja is uh, focused on prosperity. So we talk about the yang or the prosperity of dharma, dharmic prosperity, human prosperity, wealth prosperity, clothing prosperity, food prosperity. So there's all these different aspects of yang and prosperity that uh, we work towards and accomplish. <clears throat> so, um, you know, this is important for, you know, whether it's you or your family, um, it will make a change in the way how you run kind of your personal family, finances. You still have to work, of course, right? Um, but uh, through this type of practice, you'll find that your work is more effective. There's kind of an increase of results. Um, and things happen a lot faster. That's uh, for sure, 100% or so, I believe. And now this type of uh, wealth puja is, comes from Guru Rinpoche's own teachings for his students. Um, because to practice the Dharma, we go through the, you know, we have to practice the six paramitas, of which the first is the paramita of generosity. And if you need to practice generosity, you need some financial uh, finances to actually do said practice of generosity. And for that, you know, to achieve those finances, <clears throat> you need, uh, you know, he, uh, Guru Mache taught this, uh, this type of wealth practice. Um, and so there's lots of different types of wealth deities, whether it's, uh, zam, you know, black zambala, white zambala, yellow zambala. Um, there's Ganesh, there's Tlamo, Norjanma, there's Kurukule, and so on and so forth. Many different deities that are practiced for wealth purposes. But here, it's a little bit different, because this is a Lama practice. This is this is a guru practice. And all of these individual uh, wealth deities are all one within Guru Mache. They're all present within Guru Mache. He embodies all of them. So this type of practicing the guru, practicing Guru Mache as a wealth deity is different than other wealth deity practices where you might do, where it's all kind of separate in the individual. You know, a separate practice for uh, Ganesh, separate practice for Zambala, separate practice for Norjima, Kurukuli, and what have you. Sonom 
ちょっと みんなで夜は天然が通信を持った。で、聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてたのは夜は。聞いてた
didn't pay too much attention to their increased wealth and, and focused instead on practice, on doing dharma, going to retreats. Um, the students who had a hard time understanding certain concepts before gained understanding. And it's all from uh, their accumulation of merit. Um, through gathering merit, they purify their beings. And I can really see how there's so much power behind this Sopam practice. That's something I'm 100% convinced of. Because it's not me telling them to do Sopam practices. Rather, it's them telling me, saying, please, please, can we do another Sopam? And, you know, the monks who were kind of the main ones responsible for that, you know, they, they weren't saying we should do this. They're saying, oh, we have to go chant again. You know, we have to do another puja. Um, and it also wasn't, you know, kind of local Nepalese and Tibetans asking me, can we, you know, do another puja? It's, you know, a uh, more international sangha who, the type of people who usually, you know, are more skeptical and, you um, you know, quicker to question. But they saw for themselves, you know, through practicing, uh, through practicing Tsopam, just, you know, how doing this merit accumulation practices, how much it changes and transforms themselves and their lives. So they were the one. so it's these type of people who are actually asking me, begging me to do more and more Tsopams. ก็ไปได้ซะเนี่ยเก็บก็ไปได้ซะเนี่ยอุซุอุซุบาสิทาวน์เนี่ยอัมโนบาสิทาวน์อุซุบาสิทาวน์มาปานิปอเรนะเน
So, we'll do uh, a little bit more of the text for the next 10 minutes before uh, starting the puja. The next line reads, when one with the excellent fortune of possessing faith and compassion. So here it's talking about faith. But what does that mean exactly? So we need to have faith uh, primarily in three things. First, in uh, karma. That if you do good things, good results happen. If you do bad things, bad results occur and so forth. The second thing is that our mind is awakened. Our mind is the very mind of the Buddha. We have to have faith and trust in that. We have to trust that our own minds are, are in fact awakened. And the third thing is that we need to uh, have faith in the teachings that whatever Guru Maché has said and taught will, if practiced, lead to full awakening. So these are. Um, that's what it means to have faith. Sims and 
Ini jangan ya buat cuma aku. Saya nak ini pergi. Ewa pun saya ni. Tapi aku ni topat pun ni. Ewa kahani. Tapi aku ni topat cecis ni. Lomba itu pada dek topat. Yang nak sama tipar tu. Cija cija. Yang untuk lama lama cawa cija sama topat tu. Ini ngah tiri ni lomba ni ngah sih masuk mana ni ngah sih. Ngah mik mana ngah mik sama tip. Ngah cuci cuci gudu sama yang pun sama tip pun sama. Kita cuci gudu lah ya. Mungkin dia tanda. Ini ngah lomba ni ngah sih sih mana. ชาติเวลาเรียนนะครับอาจารย์อันนี้จริงมากคลาสเรียนสอนจริงๆแต่ว่าคลาสทำเองมากเพราะว่าจิตนักตัวแต่ลุงบุญเชลล่าตอนน
What does that look like? Real compassion, 100% compassion, is to have compassion with no hope for reward. Wish others to be free from suffering and the causes of suffering and not have any, not have the slightest hope for receiving something good like merit or whatever uh, on, your own, uh, on your own side. Yeah. And we have this saying that says, you know, Tibetans are defeated by uh, their hopes. Yeah. But it's not, I don't really think it's true. Uh, I think, you know, not only us Tibetans, but others, everyone's defeated by the opposite of hope, right? Which is, um, um, uh, <laughs> suspicion. So we'll, we'll pause there for now.